All right, so what I have here is a precision port, four inch flared port tube kit. It's part number 268352. I'm gonna open this up and show you what you get. Inside you get nice instructions. I'll go over this a little bit in a second. You get two rings to connect the 17 inch tube to the outside and the inside pieces. You have your outside ring which is much larger than the inside ring, so it's very easy to tell apart, plus it has screw holes. This is your inside ring, tell the difference in size. Obviously the internal diameter is the same. And then you're going to get 17 inches worth of tubing to cut down to a specific size for your tuning. Now on the instructions, I'm no mathematician. Let me show you the formula that they gave you for figuring out how long to make your port. Let me show you a trick that I figured out with this. They also say that you're going to cut the center ring five inches shorter than the total length. And then once it's completed, your tube is going to be one inch longer than the actual port size. Okay, so here's the trick that I found. If you go to Precision Sound's website where you buy the ports from, they have a calculator on there to help make everything a lot easier. All you have to do is input your dimensions and it'll give you the length of the port that you need to make. So I'm going to do mine. It's going to be 3.5 cubic feet. Tuning frequency is going to be 32. The port diameter is 4 inches. I'm only going to have one port. And then when you hit calculate, it tells you right here what your straight port length is and what your flared port length is. So what we're Okay, so what I did here was because my inner tube needs to be five inches shorter than the overall length, I marked out two and a half inches and marked all the way around it with a sharpie. To make sure that my mark was straight, I used some duct tape because it will be obvious if you're going crooked with the duct tape you'll have creases in it so that way my line was perfectly straight. The easiest way that I found to cut the tubing was with a compound miter saw. Because of the large fence on it I didn't have to worry about any kicking or crooked cut. You just need to make sure that you go nice and slow All right, so here's my two and a half inch piece cut. You can see it's perfectly even all the way around. The inside edges are not jagged or sharp. So I just took a little bit of sandpaper to them just to make sure that everything was perfect. All right, the next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna glue the inner pieces together. After you've already made sure that everything is exactly how you want it, you're gonna apply the cleaner first and then the glue. Applying everything to the inner piece, make sure that when you push the pieces together, you don't have glue oozing to the inside of the tube that can affect your frequencies. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people put these tubes together and they have to go back in and sand the inside of it. Okay, so this is the picture of the outer ring. Its actual measurement for a 4 inch tube is 7 and a quarter inches. Their website's not very clear, and that was one of the main questions I had before I bought the product. Now this is a picture with the tube completed together, and as you can see it measures eight and a half inches. Now if you remember, in the website that I showed you in the beginning of the picture, it recommended seven and a half inches. Well in the instructions, the completed tube said that it will be one inch longer than the actual port length. Thanks for watching this video. If this was helpful to you, please hit the like button or leave comments down below. Let me know how I'm doing. Subscribe to my channel to see more upcoming projects dealing with this port tube and other projects that I have going on. Click on some of the links around here to see some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching.